It's 1130 on the East Coast and we are live. Welcome everyone. Welcome to the IT hour. Happy Friday morning or yes. afternoon or evening, depending where you're at. <laughs> so, yes. Yo, Rob. Yo. <laughs> that's, that's his uh, morning greeting. Uh, so how is everyone this Friday morning? It's kind of it's rainy here. It's overcast. It's meh. Hey, you're getting our weather then from yesterday. It was very gloomy here and rainy, but it's uh it's clearing up today. So hoping for a pretty weekend. Nice. Joshua says it's pizza Friday. I did not know it was pizza Friday. It was overcast and rainy Friday. So every Friday is pizza Friday. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. I can get on board with that. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good to me. So uh, you probably think you're seeing some familiar faces and you would be right. Uh, besides, you know, same old here, probably getting sick of me, which, you know, you'll get rid of me for the next two weeks. It'll be, it'll be all good. Uh -huh. uh, for those who don't know, I'm Becky Scott. Uh, I'm head of community here at Jump Cloud. We've got Alexa with us. Uh, she is my right hand person, does all things uh, meetups and social media and produces the IT hour. So this would not happen without her. So thank you for joining us as always. And Gerada is becoming a regular face here. She's part of our product marketing team and she's been helping uh, get all kinds of our product folks on the show to let us talk about what is happening because there's been a lot going on recently. It's pretty exciting. So welcome, Gerana. Thank you, Becky. Yeah. And Sergi is back. Our Android guy. Thank you for coming again, Sergi. It's a pleasure. I'm excited to be here and I'm excited to share more news. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, Rob, you could say Alexa is an assistant. She's more than that, Rob. She is essential. She is essential. She does so many things around here. You don't even know. We can't do it without her. I'm telling you. All right. So anything fun this weekend? Anyone? But I've got a busy week and I don't know if I'd say it. I mean, it, it is fun. It's uh, it's one of my best friend's birthdays, which will be very fun. We're celebrating. And then um, it is also my grandmother's birthday and my parents anniversary. So a weekend of celebrations um and busy. Yeah, my sister, it's it is very busy um but yeah my sister and i are gonna make uh, dinner for my grandma and our parents so it will be fun nice very nice we are i guess we're getting ready to do our do our relaxing and stuff and uh, get ready yeah. for a mini vacation so That'll be, be fun. Um, my oldest just finished finals and yay, summer. They are excited about that. So that'll be, uh, that'll be good to have some, some time off. And uh, yeah, Gerana, Sergi, anything interesting? Uh, so last week we were celebrating my mother and grandmothers for Mother's Day. Uh, this weekend we're trying to catch up on the housework. So unless if the rain slows down, we might do some pressure washing of the house. But besides that, just having a hopefully relaxed weekend. Yeah, I love That's relaxing. Yeah, for me it's more of like a uh, planning for summer. Like you, Becky, finals week is next week for my oldest, and then. Yeah, summer is catching up and then fall is coming again. So yeah, trying very hard now to plan where I can go within, you know, the next couple of months. So yeah, there you go. Nothing exciting, but you know, it'll be exciting soon once we get to a destination, right? So yeah, the uh, the community pool opens uh, this weekend. So they're planning a big, big shindig and stuff. I, uh, I don't know if it's, I haven't looked to see if it's going to rain tomorrow. That may, <laughs> that may change things. So, so we will see. Um, Sergi, don't listen to Rob. Rob is saying it's you're doing advice. it wrong. Don't clean it's the terrible house. Terrible advice. <laughs> burn it down and move. That's terrible, terrible advice. Um, <laughs> yeah, insurance companies don't like that. <laughs> they they tend to find out. Um, all right. So, 
regular agenda is in effect today. We're going to talk a little bit about community and meetups and uh, what's coming along in product. And then uh, Sergi's going to talk about Android EMM. We've got some cool stuff coming up. We're excited. A uh, little bit quiet in the community this week. We, uh, we have some blog posts going live later today. So I, uh, I don't have the well, I could go look up the titles, but I won't spoil it for you. You can go look later this afternoon to find those. There is a question in the community about porting your jump cloud logs into Sentinel One XDR. Um, one of our members had a Slim Jim had a question about that. So if you want to go head over and answer that, if you have any experience in that and you want to help him out, please feel free to do that. And uh, Alexa meetups. Oh, well, yeah, I, uh, we talked about this. I'm actually going to pull uh, an Uno reverse on you because you uh, you hosted the Raleigh meetup this week. And so I wanted to ask you, you know, how it went, maybe give the people a little recap. Yeah. So we, um, like we'd been hyping up, we met at the Umstead, which is a really nice uh, hotel in Cary and a really beautiful bar and lounge there, right? They've got a nice little patio that overlooks the, um, the Umstead. It's, it's like a, there's a place to go hiking and everything, really beautiful view, water and everything. And and we met there really nice food and everything. There was about a half dozen of us. Um, and we had a really good chat, lost track of time and had some, some new faces and everything. And so it was, it was really pleasant. We had, uh, one person who drove a, a fair distance to get there too. So it was really nice to meet her and, and get to chat and hopefully she will come back and, uh, saw some, some, uh, faces we have seen before and that was fun. And, uh, yeah, we had a really good time and, in addition to that, uh, Tom went to the Pennsylvania Mac admins meetup and they seem to have a good time as well. He said there, I think there were about 25 or 30 people there. So that was uh, pretty impressive and they, they had a great time and, and seemed to enjoy it. And I'm sure uh, the next time Tom's on, we can ask him a little bit more about how it went, but he said it, uh, they had a good time. So that's not an official hour meetup, but, but Tom went and represented us and got to uh, talk with all the Mac admins. And we've been talking about Mac admins in general, because we're really looking forward to the PSU conference in July. It's only two months away at this point. Yeah. I think it's like the 18th through the 21st. And so looking forward to, we're planning, planning, planning though. So. Can't mm -hmm. wait to have that happen and see everybody in person. Haven't done that in quite a while. So all good yeah. stuff. Yes. And then with that, what do we have next? I believe product stuff around. We've got some webinars coming up. Yeah. Yep. So next week we've got our Q2 roadmap webinars. So they're going to be really great. Uh, we've got our product folks who are excited to share those updates with you. So on the 23rd, uh, 12 p.m. Eastern time, we've got our direct uh, product roadmap webinar. Um, and then the next day, the 24th, we've got our MSP focused uh, pro or partner roadmap webinar. So those are gonna be great. If you're interested to see what's coming up, uh, don't miss those. Um, we've got Chase and crew uh, who are, yeah, excited to, to chat with you. Yeah, this will be great. I'm sure we will. I'm sure we will have some follow-ups here as well as you I imagine so. so. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And with that, Sergi, we are going to hand it over to you because I think you have eh, you know, one or two things to share with us about Android. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Let me go ahead and share my screen there and we will get started. So, um, for those of you that don't know me, Sergio Bellas, I'm the principal product manager overseeing mobility. Uh, really excited to be with you, sharing where we are in our journey for Android. Uh, so let's keep on going then. So a couple of disclaimers to provide here. Uh, some of this information is a little bit more in terms of uh, future product releases that may differ materially than the expectation. So just wanted to call that out. Beyond that, uh, I'm going to do a very, very brief review. I think most of you have probably seen this over the course of 
a little while in terms of our overall cloud directory platform devices plays a critical role in here when we look at Android that's something that's been I'd say lacking uh, and we're excited to one address that and continue to very very aggressively build upon that so um, the devices platform right there's this overall arching journey between the onboarding the configuration uh, deployment of software instantiating of security keeping that you know uh, essentially keeping a tabs on that, keeping that compliant and that continuing that uh, overall journey over and over and over for all those devices that you may have in your fleet. And that mobility value chain continues to progress, right? The focus for us here at JumpCloud is we want to get uh, through the complete value chain. There we start off with that basic device enrollment, uh, typically focused on corporate owned and at times also making sure that we're not forgetting the BYO use cases, being able to put down some very rudimentary uh, configurations like a passcode or uh, something that's applicable to the operating system as well. Beyond that starts coming sort of that conversation of ease of deployment and uh, the deploying of whether that's uh, zero touch uh, enrollment of devices or device level applications. Beyond that comes sort of the question of, well, okay, you've uh, issued a device, you've enrolled a device, but now there's a corresponding user and an identity. How do you corp uh, sort of curate uh, that flavor to that particular user, whether that's a Wi-Fi configuration, email or applications dedicated to that particular user. And finally, that's kind of the point where we call MVP or minimally viable for what our customers typically would want to deploy and beyond there we continue to layer on what i would call the jump cloud dna or that connective tissue with mobile sso the notions of a, between the server and the client of automation uh, so definitely value to be built on so this is sort of a kind of a guiding uh, principle or guiding value for us and when we're looking at it android has had a rich history android management has had a rich history from device admin which at this point has been quite long deprecated and those legacy vendors building each of their agents to get you know some uh, each flavor for whether that's samsung or lg or htc to now there came the evolution of what was known as android for work or rebranded to android enterprise or the play emm apis and eventually google took a more aggressive stance of consolidating and making sure that it was streamlined of what devices could enroll what capabilities they would have and that they introduced android management apis and moving forward android enterprise with android management APIs is the way to go I'm excited to say that junk cloud is following that exact recommended path of leveraging the latest available APIs to make sure that for a long-term uh, supportability and backwards compatibility for our customers. Uh, so that kind of that statement kind of gets underscored right there. And beyond that, when we look at a kind of an infographic, we sort of sit there in the middle uh, interacting with all the available Android management APIs. We do communicate with Google and Google has a level of instantiation, whether that's the play APIs, whether that's notifications, the deployment of the policies and also their uh, built Android device policy or ADP or Android device policy application that instantiates, that's their quote unquote agent that facilitates the enrollment and the policy enforcement. Beyond that, uh, Android has a plethora of capabilities. When you look at EMM, uh, you have your BYO use case, you have that company owned, but you would still have a little bit of wiggle room for your personal use cases. Then you have that flavor of company purchased, company enrolled, company enforced. And then sometimes that's to the right most, you have that sort of dedicated use case, single use, whether that's a kiosk, a signage device, a, you know, a device in a warehouse, scanning barcodes. Uh, when we looked at the available enrollment flows, we wanted to offer the complete gambit, but we understood that we'd have to approach it in phases. So for our phase one, and excited to say it has rolled out, we've been rolled out for about a week and a half, two weeks, fully GA is phase one. That's work profile for both BYOD and company owned devices. Uh, we are focusing on now on phase two, as well as the feedback we're getting from our customers in the uh, production environment. So excited to continue hearing from those, whether it's in the lounge in Android at jumpcloud.com feedback in the community through your AEs or SEs, excited to hear back and see how we can continue building on a very uh, valuable product for you. 
from there. This kind of summarizes uh, one slide that probably summarizes uh, the extent of what we've delivered to date between the management, the policy enforcement uh, ended up uh, going a little wild there. Instead of doing what we intended of three policies, we ended up, I think, pushing more than 10, I think 12 or 13 policies are now in production because we wanted our customers to be able to leverage the full gambit of those standard, optional, and even advanced features that Google has to offer. Um, you can you know, take the necessary com commands, such as locking the device, wiping, or resetting those uh, settings. You can actually even using our custom payload deploy compliance policies to do level of enforcement based on what you deem as most appropriate. And we are offering what I would constitute as probably the most robust application solution relative to other platforms within Jump Cloud. So you're able to search, you're able to organize and distribute both public, private, and even web apps or web clips all to those respective devices. And that's capabilities that we'll continue to invest on and make sure that they are more robust and available in quite a feature-rich setting. If I'm looking at that kind of a bullet point list of all the things we've delivered, it's kind of a, almost a, a small font because it's a quite a level of focus. We heard from the community of who was anticipating and excited for Android. It took us a little bit of time to get to there, but we made sure we were very strategic of laying the foundation using the latest APIs and building a feature rich uh, MVP. And we're anticipation is to continue to build on top of that. So uh, kind of give you an overview of when you have conversations uh, with your end users or your stakeholders of what sort of capabilities you can address today in Jump Cloud for Android is either BYO or company owned, personally enabled. That's sort of the visual distribution there. Uh, there has been, and I see a couple of questions already that come about of uh, how do you enforce a company owned Android device to enroll dedicated into Android or what is a fully managed device? And I'll definitely want to touch base on this presentation to make sure our audience is fully aware. So in terms of policies that are available right now, here's again, a laundry list of those things. We're continuing to build upon it and you'll notice that as part of our phase two, a number of these will actually not necessarily uh, be new ones, but they will. we will continue enhancing upon them. So policies that are applicable to work profile only, or that may be applicable to work profile and fully managed will uh, start uh, behaving uh, or becoming available and behaving accordingly based on the enrollment type. So spoke to the app management suite, uh, a couple of things that people might not be aware of, the private and the web apps, those are definitely uh, easily able to be accessed and deployed. Uh, make sure you, you know, uh, uploading the right configuration of those APKs and managing those web apps accordingly. But if we're looking, and this probably dives in a little bit more detail of what customers have been anticipating. So if you look at the first column or phase one, that's what we delivered in early May. That's that laundry list of features that we had spent some time building that foundation for device enrollment, the device policy infrastructure, as well as our application management suite. Moving forward, we're already uh, quite deep into the phase two of the development cycle. We're excited to say that we're it's really building on uh, on that foundation and offering all the enrollment types. So we will be as part of our phase two delivering fully managed device provisioning. Uh, of that, there will be that subset of dedicated device provisioning. Each of them are quite treated similarly relative to the policies. So system update, being able to schedule define updates, being able to deploy certificates, uh, being able to satiate additional network restrictions or even defining whether or not a device when factory reset has the ability to go back to where it go uh, back to the same management configuration uh, that will be all in place for dedicated there are some more unique policies like kiosk mode so an op option to deploy to a singular application to be locked into that mode or having sort of a launcher experience where you have several defined applications that will be supported and should you have that signage or sort of uh, use case. Sometimes you have the notion of how do I define battery mode, whether it's on, you know, uh, how it's charging and when that screen stays unlocked, available to my end users to use, that will be controlled by the battery mode. If we're looking beyond that, just a little bit of a foreshadowing is the level of differentiation and building upon that would be things like zero touch enrollment. So that's something that 
beyond uh, often customers in the Apple space may attribute this to sort of uh, a DEP or ADE, where when you purchase a particular device uh, with Apple, you go through a certified reseller, you purchase it and you have an ability to have that device appear in your zero touch portal. You'll be able to associate it to your MDM or in this case, EMM uh, vendor and be able to deploy the necessary policies. A uh, number of our customers are excited about doubling down on our conditional access strategy and making sure that mobile devices are able to play a critical role there and building, as I alluded to, on that app lifecycle and just deeper integrations between Jump Cloud itself and Google Workspace is something that we're excited to continue that journey on. Uh, so if we're looking at fully managed, just wanted to give an opportunity to sort of underscore some educational moments fully managed and dedicated are sort of viewed relatively similar on in terms of enrollment there are certain layers of capabilities that can be applied to dedicated in addition to what fully managed is those are really driven by the use cases you may have whether that's as i mentioned in the past inventory locking it down maybe disabling certain capabilities to settings or modifying that launcher or you need to have it set on a set application continuously. Those are the aspects, but that first uh, iconography or picture there is focus on the typical, your typical knowledge-based worker that may get a physical device from your company or organization uh, that will only do work-related items. There's no personal expectation of personal privacy on that said device. Uh, all of that is managed by the company and visible to the company. So we want to make sure we underscore that. If you want to have a use case where it's a company owned device, but you want to give that flexibility of personal use, we strongly recommend you take a look at that work profile for company owned because it gives that level of separation. Still securing the device, um, having device level restrictions, as well as having that container level restrictions to protect your data, your applications and your overall organization there. Beyond that, some of the breakdowns and what we're actively working on. So called out those two enrollment flows. With it will come some additional security capabilities in those, those policies that I rattled off earlier. We're excited to, some of these will build on the ones that we already have, whether that be the device or account restrictions, or even the lock screen restrictions. Those will sort of iterate upon what we have already and others will be net new ones that we're excited to have debut here in the next couple of months. From there, kind of showcases what that would look like in terms of iconography and uh, attention to the use cases that you may be able to address. And beyond that, uh, we will have more updates to follow. I hope that Becky and Alexa have me over more often as we do, do get those in EA or GA with phases two and start working on phase three. Excited to share, hear back from our audience. Hopefully I addressed the initial question that Nathan had and open to any others. We did have one that I'm not sure if you had answered in there about any description of the Windows MDM process that is being developed. Yeah, so Steve not really, ask that. gotcha. Yeah, it's not really part of the my particular scope, but in terms of Windows MDM, we do have a robust multi-phase strategy that my PI is undertaking that there. Uh, so we're starting off with having the initial toggle to be able to convert the existing uh, agent enrolled devices under Windows MDM that will go into effect as a global effort over the time. And then we will continue to invest on the Windows MDM protocol itself to build additional policies and pair that fairly well with the Microsoft uh, APIs that they provide or the Windows APIs and layer that on very closely with our agent and the, uh, the additional value that it provides. Yeah, we actually have um, Scott Reed, the um, Windows product managers on IT Hour next week. So, um, you know, maybe we can revisit that questions. And if you guys have any other questions with regards to Windows MDM, um, he would be the, the right person to actually review some of the roadmap. Yeah, absolutely. So tune in next week for Scott. He's, if you haven't seen him on the IT hour before, he's great as well. And uh, I'm sure he'll be able to go into some of that. Uh, Luke did drop in another question. That was, uh, I'm also curious how we might see feature parity here with iOS devices for BYOD. We're pretty evenly split. 
but we can't really deploy anything related to conditional access or wide without iOS matching what's available with Android. Context, we want conditional SSO app access for approved BYOD devices. Correct. So that actually double clicks on that sort of cross platform strategy where when we're looking at device trust or conditional access, we're looking at it across mobile, not just on Android or on iOS. It has to be a unified front. You can't, you know, allow or block an iOS device, but not do anything about an Android device or vice versa. So that strategy is being looked at. It will be uniformed and the anticipation is uh, relatively close, as close as possible that development and release would be uh, coordinated as well. Yeah, Luke. And look, maybe um, I suggest that you put in a feature request for this um, because whatever that's on our feature request board, um, we do evaluate and in terms mm -hmm. of priorities, right, on the roadmap, um, it's on the roadmap, but when is it going to show up early or late, right, really depends on um, a lot of the demands from our customers. So if that's something that, you know, you, are, you really want and whatever that is on, especially H2 that um, Sergi has already talked about differentiator that you guys think that's missing and and um, it needs to come out sooner. Just put it out there and even um, email android at jumpcloud.com so that you know we we have our eyes on it and can let you guys know once uh, that's coming. Yeah, Luke says I've been re feature requesting this for a few years. Well, <laughs> thank you for that, Luke. And by the way. Uh, two weeks from now on the second when i'm still out tom bridge will be hosting and he's the director over devices so maybe you can uh put in another plug i know i know luke already knows who tom is and he talks to him all the time on on the lounge but you know put another plug in there put another um feature request and actually this is a good time to plug that for other people in addition to luke putting that in there. Cause if Luke's already been putting it in, uh, <laughs> Luke says he's on Tom's naughty list. Um, if others also put that in there as well, the more people that request it, the more it will bubble up to the top so that we will see that, Oh, it's not just Luke requesting it. It's other people as well. We love you, Luke. Um, and that way, the, the more people we see, uh, asking for it, the more likely it is to come up to the top and, and get better priority. So Tom must be Santa. Uh, pretty close. I think, uh, I mean, he's, he's as nice as Santa. We like him as much as we like Santa. He's pretty cool. Stuart, you've seen him on the it hour before, you know, you know, Tom, we all know Tom. So, uh, I think, oh, wait, let me double check. Did I miss a question? I missed a couple. Yes. So, uh, Steve, following up on Luke's question, I'm working on certificate authorization for Wi-Fi. Is that also possible for authorized Android devices on the secure Wi-Fi SSID? Yeah, it's a wonderful question. I think as part of phase two, we're looking at ability to enhance our current Wi-Fi configuration policy in, a, in tackling the EA configuration so at that point you'd be able to upload a certificate and associate that certificate to that wi-fi policy and deploy it so whether that be a uh, fully managed device dedicated device they would be able to receive that certificate and authenticate to that uh, network so yes that's definitely something we're looking into and looking to develop upon that okay and one more will the android device managed Will the Android device managed be like the Apple VPP? Yeah, so Apple VPP specifically relates to the volume purchase program. Uh, in terms of the applications, Android behaves ever, ever so slightly different. Uh, you do have the, in the Jump Cloud Admin Console, we have integrated the uh, Play Store. It's a managed Play Store where you can interact and view any application. Uh, that is in the public store. And as you make that selection, it appears in Jump Cloud and you can then distribute that based on our sort of device or device group assignment. So if that's the question, then that will be related. If the broader question was relative to like ABM or Apple Business Manager for sort of enrollment, we with the Android Zero Touch enrollment, we will, as part of phase three, have that integrated 
directly into the gem cloud environment as well and you'll be able to manage where that a particular device and what type of policy or what kind of configuration it receives awesome all right well i don't see any more questions but if you want to pop some more in there oh wait wait oh there's just a thank you so steve says thank you uh, so if there are any more, you are welcome to drop those in and we will pop back over and answer those as you think of them. So feel free. Uh, Sergi, thank you. And yes, earlier you said that you were open to coming back. Of course, open invitation whenever there's a, a new Android update or you're working on something new, please feel free. And next time you're on, we'll ask you about the Matryoshka dolls that you have in the background, because those are awesome. We were talking about those Thank earlier, you. but uh, we'll give you an opportunity to tell a little bit more about those uh, the next time you're on. Absolutely. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Yeah. And with that, uh, we've got a little bit of time for some news. And as always, there's, there's always something interesting going on. Uh, I don't know if you've, you've heard, but... Um, Okay, so Alexa, I'm sorry, I'm gonna put you on the spot for a second. You you know what, it, it's nothing major. You know what- My a, favorite thing. <laughs> you know what a zip file is, right? Yes. Okay, and um, we all know what a, a .mov file is. Okay, these are files normally. Well, Google decided, okay, I don't know who made this decision, but I'm questioning, why more people didn't look at this, but they decided to put .zip and .mov domains, domain names, top level domain names out there uh, as, as uh, domain names out, out on the web. Uh, the headline was funny on Ars Technica, Google pushes .zip and .mov domains onto the internet and the internet pushes back. <laughs> And the reason this is just bonkers is because, yes, Rob, I love Rob's comment. Whoever made it needs to be fired, then rehired so they can be fired again. Because this is just ridiculously dumb. I, I'm just going to say it. It's dumb because of the implications of it being a hyperlink where if someone clicks on it thinking it is a website link when it's actually a file download and it can be used for malicious files so easily. It's just so, <laughs> it's so stupid. I can't even form the words beyond how stupid it is. Uh, so what they said was, um, there, there've been thousands of new top level domains. Um, two weeks ago, Google added eight new TLDs to the internet, bringing the total number to 1,480, um, according to the internet assigned numbers authority. And they're the ones that, that oversee, you know, all the, the new domain names and stuff, but two of them have sparked scorn in security circles. Well, Google marketers, oh, there you go. It was the marketers and I'm on the marketing team. Okay. So <laughs> I can say that, uh, the aim to is to designate tying things together or moving really fast and moving pictures and whatever moves you respectively. That's what they're saying. These names are supposed to be for, but of course, you know, security people are warning that these two in particular will cause confusion when they're in emails or on social media and elsewhere, because they usually automatically convert strings and take them to a domain. But because these can refer to files as well, it's going to be really easy for scammers to seize on this ambiguity. And people think, oh, I'm headed to a website and it's really a download and zip files are no notorious for obscuring malicious files. This is just such a bad idea. So bad, like beyond bad, like bad, 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 horribly bad. Rob's just bringing it with all the, the funny, um, 
<laughs> totally lousy domains, TLD is the top level domains. I like it. I think you should trademark that and substitute it, Rob. So yeah, I, I don't know what Google was thinking. I guess the marketing department didn't check with anyone else and thinking that that was, oh, let's just release this. Oh yeah, this is a great idea. Sometimes I wonder what goes through people's heads. So that was the first headline that jumped out at me. Like, oh goody, this is going to be great. And speaking of Android and not to beat up on Android, I, I promise this isn't why I, I pulled this headline, um, but potentially millions of Android TVs and phones are coming with malware pre-installed. There were two different reports that came out um, that Android devices potentially came with pre-installed malware that couldn't be removed without users taking heroic measures. So the first report came from um, Trend Micro and researchers were following up on something delivered at Black Hat Security Conference. And they said that as many as 8.9 million phones comprising as many as 50 different brands were infected with malware, um, basically coming from Gorilla, as they named them, the malware, found in up to 15 different malicious apps that Google allowed into its Play Store market. Uh, it opens a back door that causes infected devices to regularly communicate with remote command and control servers to check if there are any new malicious updates for them to install. And they collect data about the users that the threat actor, which Trend Micro calls the Lemon Group, can then sell to advertisers. Now, unfortunately, um, Trend Micro didn't respond to uh, Ars Technica giving the name of the brands that have these potentially installed. So, um, I don't have a report on which ones, but Gorilla is a massive platform with nearly a dozen plugins that can hijack users' WhatsApp sessions to send unwanted messages, establish a reverse proxy from an infected phone, and inject ads into legit apps. So there's, there's a lot. Oh, and I see y'all are really going nuts in the chat there. I will come back after I, after I finish this. The second report was from TechCrunch. And it detailed um, several lines of Android-based TV boxes sold through Amazon that are also laced with malware. Uh, the boxes reported to be T95 models um, report to a command and control server that just like the Gorilla servers can install any application the malware creators want. And um, it's pre-installed on the boxes known as a click box. And it also does like generates advertising re revenue by tapping on ads in the background. So buyer beware. So not beating up on Android. Just want to give you a heads up that those are going on so you can be careful. <laughs> Brandon, I see Brandon's thing about jumpcloud.zip is available. Oh, goody. I'll grab that so uh, no one else can. He says it's it. only $150. That's it? Wow. I bought my own .com name for, for only 100 so that's a steal. <laughs> A lot of new domains are used for illegitimate reasons is what Keith is saying. Email and security providers are already suspect based on the registration of dates of new domains. So yeah, you're right. They, they will probably be downranked. I just can't believe. Remember when it was just .net, .com, .org, and .info, and then country TLDs? Pepperidge Farm. Remembers. Now you're really digging back into the archives there, Rob. LOL, the note from Google, the zip domain is designed to be secure. Google registry has added it to the HSTS preload list, requiring all zip websites to have an encrypted SSL connection to load. Oh yeah, that's, that's going to take care of everything. I'm sure. No problem. SSL secured, sure, Google, no one is going to click. I accept the risk. <sighs> I tell you. So, uh, the FTC is finding an app called Premom for handing personal data, health data, to Chinese companies and Google. So, heads up to uh especially 
women, people with uteruses who are tracking data, or if you're married to someone who's tracking data and thinking about getting pregnant, uh, this is important because people were putting information into an app called Premom and tracks ovulation. And apparently they just started giving this information to advertising companies and didn't tell the users of the app that they were sharing this information with the advertisers, Google apps, flyer, a couple businesses in China, no big deal. Hmm. They just forgot to tell the users about it. That's all nothing else to say. The FTC says that pre mom broke the law and they're trying to keep companies from, you know, breaching people's health privacy. And the reason, uh, I'm calling this out in particular, the company that runs this is easy healthcare corporation. They operate the pre mom app. Um, this is extremely important for people because there are states who are starting to want to use this information to track people. And then how do I put this? Um, prosecute them with that information. If, um, it doesn't go quite in line with their laws of restricting women's health rights. I'm, I'm trying to tread carefully here. I don't know why I'm trying to tread carefully here, here. I should just, you know, say it outright, but this is our, our company, uh, weekly cast, but you should read this, pass this along to people, you know, if someone happens to be using this app or any healthcare app where they are not sure how the information is being secured and shared because there are states who will subpoena this information and go after it and try to do things with that information. And I think you can extrapolate from there where I'm going with that. So be careful out there. I don't think some of our regular ladies are on the cast today, but uh, when you rewatch this, you know who I'm talking to. All right, on to AI. You know, you know, we're going to circle back to AI at some point. Um, thank you for agreeing, Brandon. Appreciate you. Apple is banning employees from using Chat GPT, even amidst their own AI efforts. Um, they're restricting employee use of Chat GPT and other external AI utilities amidst the development of their own technology mostly because they're concerned that AI tools could leak companies' confidential data. Now, I think we've heard of other companies doing that too, right? You plug in a question related to what you're working on, and it could be company data related, and it kind of hangs on to it, and then there's a breach, and then whatever you asked it about of what you were working on, and then, whoops. So, Sergi, no asking it questions about phase three, of the Android EMM, just in case. All right. <laughs> keep that in mind moving forward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I know we gotta keep our eye on you. I just, I just know it. <laughs> but uh, you, we all know that Apple is famously, um, famously worried about leaks anyway. So like, the, it's obvious that it, it, it's no surprise that they are restricting something like that. But apparently OpenAI has sold uh, Morgan Stanley a private chat GPT service that allows employees to ask questions and analyze content. So, and Microsoft is working on a version um, targeted at business customers to address privacy concerns. So it's no surprise that Apple's probably doing the same thing, or at least something that would allow them to keep things internal so that, you know, nothing leaks because they, uh, they get very mad when things leak that shouldn't. But I did, I, I guess there was just a brand new chat GPT um, app in the Apple store just this morning, like 
super early this morning. I, I have to upgrade my iOS before I can download it. Like I tried and it told me, nope, you need 16.1 or something before you can download it. So that's next. I'm going to try it, but I, I promise I won't type any company questions in there. What does Rob say? Great. So now they can find out which employees they can fire without having HR go through emails. <laughs> they just search the who's been using chat GPT. Oh, did you ask any company questions? Oh, you're out of here. Poof. Making it easier all the time. All the time. Speaking of updating, which I'm, let's see, is it done? Ah, is it done yet? Oh, it says hello. Yes, I guess it is done. So updating as we speak because iOS 16.5, iPad OS 16.5, and Mac OS 13.4 updates released today. Although I don't know the date on this. It might have been yesterday today. Um, released to address vulnerabilities that are known to have been exploited by bad actors. Important to update as soon as you can. According to support documents, the updates fixed three WebKit vulnerabilities. Two were addressed in prior 16.4.1 iOS and macOS 13.3.1 rapid security response updates. They're not an issue if you updated, but there's a third vulnerability that is still active until you install the latest updates. The WebKit security flaw could allow an attacker to break out of the web content sandbox, an issue that Apple fixed with improved bounds checks. Apple says it is aware of a report that this issue may have been actively exploited. So get to your updates, please. If you haven't, if you use an iPhone, go update. Now be right after this. All right. Good job. <laughs> so yesterday, Stuart says yesterday. Yeah, I think I was um, pulling an article that was dated yesterday that said release today. So um, pro tip, you don't get a choice on iOS. Mine kept failing update overnight um, on, on the previous updates and every morning I'd wake up and it would said, oh, it failed. So I'm having to do mine manually for whatever reason, but that's fine. I'm, I need to do it if I want to play with the new chat GPT app anyway. So incentive, a weird incentive, but Hey, I'm, I'm a nerd. You, you all already know I'm a nerd anyway. So that's one way to get me to do it. I'm not sure what Keith's truth was, whether it was about not getting a choice on iOS or don't use WebKit on Mac OS or released yesterday, but truth. <laughs> <laughs> So that was all I had pulled for news. I mean, there's a lot of other things going on, but those seem like the ones that jumped out at me. No jump scares today, but those were the ones that pulled out. So anything else that I missed in the chat that we need to go over? It was not using WebKit iOS. Even other browsers are required to use WebKit engine. All browsers on iOS use WebKit, even though Chrome would prefer not to. I don't use Chrome on my iOS. I just use the default Safari. I don't know. I don't know if I should or not, but I'm lazy. Same. I'm not lazy with security. I'm just lazy with downloading an extra browser. I promise. I promise, Bob, if you're listening, Bob's our, our CISO. I, I promise I'm not lazy on security. Um. Oh, see, Brandon's already searching for the .zip uh, URLs and searching for what what you're going to buy some, aren't you, Brandon? Some URLs are premium for zip, like parody.zip. Maybe you should look up party.zip and see what you got. I, uh, a long time ago, bought some .mom names, and they were also premium, very, very premium. And they've only gone up since then, but they were fun. Um, I have way too many domain names that I will probably never do anything with. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know. It's a sickness. A thousand party dot zip is a thousand dollars a year. Yikes. I don't know what you'd do with that anyway. I guess if you were an events planner. Hey, go tell Caroline quick. 
<laughs> Maybe she'll want it. <laughs> that's our friend. That's an event planner. All right. With that, uh, I guess we will give you 10 minutes back to go. Rob, go refill your coffee, your extra, extra coffee. And, uh, oh no, Brandon just had a terrible thought. Shall we wait? Let's wait. Everybody. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> You could buy name like Brandon.zip. There you go. What would you do with it though? What would you do? And how much is it? Is it only a hundred dollars or is it super duper premium? Or would it be like, you know, where you tell somebody to zip it, Brandon, zip, zip, zip it. <laughs> or maybe we should buy Rob.zip. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. All right. That's, I guess we'll, we'll stop there. We're just <laughs> going downhill, going downhill. Zipperty dude. <laughs> Stuart. Zipperty doo -dah. That's right. Song of the South, Disney. That was a long time ago. It, it doesn't hold up well though. It's uh, it did not age well. Let's just put it that way. Um, happy world family doctor day. Also Google doodle. Oh, let's go check out the Google Doodle before you shut down for the day. Um, today's my last day for vacation, so I will not see you all for two weeks. We're going to have a couple of guest hosts. Alexa's taking care of that. So I know Tom will be the Friday after next. I'm not sure yet about this coming Friday right before Memorial Day, but uh, we know Scott's going to be on. So we got at least that covered. And uh, I hope you all have fun without me, but not too much fun because I will be back. Even if you don't want me to be, I will be. So sorry, can't get away from me that easily. Um, so with that, see y'all in a couple of weeks. Enjoy, have fun, and talk to you later. Have a good weekend. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye all. Thank you, Stuart. I will. <laughs>